Okay, so we have the demo scene running and this is running with OpenXR. Let's go ahead and try and see if we can scroll. We're gonna scroll just fine. I'm going to try to push different buttons. This is bringing in the keyboard. So keyboard is opening just fine. I'm going to try and see if I can bring the sphere towards me. See if we can actually rotate it. I can also rotate it. I can also grab it and rotate it myself by just doing a pinch interaction. I'm also going to be grabbing the cheese. How about the piano? Let's, let's see if the piano works. So what I have right now, it's a Unity empty scene in an empty project. I call it OpenXR MITK demo. And it's using Unity 2020.2.7 F1. So I don't have anything in it, just a plain old project. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open the Mixed Reality Toolkit. This is gonna be the first thing that you do to get this going. When you open the Mixed Reality uh, Feature Tool, you're gonna go into the Mixed Reality Toolkit and MRTK 2.6 released a couple of days ago. I said that on the previous video, but those of you who didn't watch that video, make sure that you use that version. So what I would have you do is just go ahead and check the Mixed Reality Toolkit examples, which is what we're gonna be using, also the extensions, and also the Mixed Reality Toolkit Foundation. On the platform support, it's really important that you install the Mixed Reality OpenXR plugin, because that's basically what this video is going to be about. Once you do that, just go ahead and click on Get Features, Okay, so it looks like all the features were downloaded. Now we're gonna be picking up the location where I have the project, so I have it under code. And if I sort by day modified, this is the one that we just created, that I just created before the video started. And you're gonna basically select that location of your project, hit open, and then I recommend that you do validate because there's sometimes different versions of Unity that are basically dependent on the version of these packages. So. If you don't do validate and you go through and do it, it might just break your project. So make sure you do that before. And then click on import. It's gonna give you an overview, it's kind of like a diff check to make sure everything looks okay. I'm gonna do approve and then exit out. Okay, so it looks like all the packages were applied. So let's go ahead and go into window and we're gonna look at the package manager. So in the package manager, there's gonna be two things that we're gonna look for. I want to first download the example. So we're gonna be doing a selective import of the samples. This is something that I just learned that you could do. So I'm gonna go into toolkit samples and then I'm going to be importing the hand tracking one. Let's go ahead and do import. And the cool thing with that is it's just going to import that specific example where before MRTK you would download it, it'll just import everything. So this is really cool because I only wanna look at what I need. The other thing that I also want to look at is I wanna make sure if I go to the unit registry Let's make sure that OpenXR, it's in there already and that the right version is installed. And it looks like it's already been installed because it was a, dependent, a dependency of my other package, which was the Mixed Reality, the Mixed Reality OpenXR plugin. So we're good to go there. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you go into scenes and then we're gonna open up the, the first default scene. It's gonna ask you to import Test Mesh Pro, so that's fine. We'll just go ahead and import it because we're gonna need it for some of the labels on the UI here. Once that happens, I'm just going to, let's go ahead and disable Gizmo so that we can look at the scene. And there's gonna be a couple of things that we need to do first. So let's go ahead and go into the Mixed Reality Toolkit Game Object. And if you go to that, you're gonna see that you got different profiles, right? But we're gonna be using OpenXR, so make sure that you do the default OpenXR configuration profile. If you look at Microsoft documentation, they'll walk you through cloning these, and basically you can clone the camera, the input, all the different profiles within it. I actually tested with this profile only and everything works, so just make sure that you select that as a profile. Then now you need to go to File, Build Settings, and I'm gonna be adding this scene as the scene that we're gonna be building. I'm also going to be switching this to Universal Windows Platform, so let's go ahead and do that. And let me actually hit the right button here, Switch Platform. All right, so as soon as we switch the platform, we're gonna get this command again, basically the dialog again, just hit Apply. And now everything should be switched. I'm gonna go ahead and look at player settings. And this is where we're gonna be spending some time on. So because we're using the new XR plugin management and OpenXR, we're gonna be focusing a lot in this area. So the first thing that we're gonna do in order for us to support OpenXR, we're gonna go ahead and click on OpenXR. And then we're also going to be enabling the Microsoft HoloLens feature set. And then if you click on this dialog, it's gonna be bringing in this little dialog telling you there's a couple of settings that need to be changed in order for us to support OpenXR, so we're just gonna go ahead and click on Fix All. And we'll just trust Unity that Unity is going to do its best to make sure that everything works with OpenXR. Okay, so it looks like that part is done. We're gonna do the same thing on the PC, Mac, and Linux standalone. I'm gonna enable the OpenXR preview. 
And I'm also going to be enabling Windows Mixed Reality Feature Set. And once we do that, there's going to be one more thing that we need to do. Let's just make sure these two are checked. And then let's go into OpenXR. And in here, there's going to be two different options that you can set. There's sing you can use single pass instance or multi pass. And also the depth submission mode. You can do either 16 and 24. I think I did 16 last time I was testing with this. So I'm going to go ahead and change it to the 16 bit. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to features. And this is where we're going to be spending most of our time. It's actually not that much work. But all you need to know is that we're going to be supporting HoloLens OpenXR plugin. So this needs to be checked. If you wanted to test with the holographic editor remoting, you would check this and basically set the IP address of your device. I actually tested with the version of MRTK 2.6 and it doesn't work. So I'll just let you know once, once that is actually working. And then I just got to check a couple more things in here just to make sure HoloLens OpenXR plugin it is set and we're good to go. So that's basically everything that we need to do as far as like the feature sets for OpenXR. The next thing that we're going to need to do, there's going to be, there's an issue with the, the current version of MRTK 2.6. So we're going to have to go down to packages and I'm going to show you one fix that we need to make. So we're going to go into Toolkit Foundation. Let me see if I can remember this. And then OpenXR. So the Foundation Providers OpenXR Scripts. And then we're going to be looking at the OpenXR Device Manager. The reason why I know this is because there's a known bug that we discover. Well, I actually tried to deploy. The hands weren't actually getting rendered. So I talked to one of the developers in the HoloLens team, MRTK team, and they told me to make a change to this line. So that's basically what I'm going to be doing, just making a change to the line. But this is going to be fixed on the next version, which is 2.6.1. Just make sure that you watch that video. So if you look at that, all we're changing is OpenXR Loader to this new, which is OpenXR Loader Base. And once you do that, the, the basically the hands are going to be rendered and everything is going to work just fine. So what I'm going to do now is this description is going to be in the video. So you guys can go through and look at all the steps. But I'm actually going to basically build it just to make sure everything is going to work before I call this video as a success. Let's just wait for everything to finish there. I'm going to go into Build Settings. And then in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to ARM64. And let me just make sure we're going to be targeting HoloLens. And I'm going to leave that as default, that as default. Local machine is fine because we're going to be building locally. And I think I did, yeah, I did release, so we're good to go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a folder. I normally just create a folder here on my desktop, HoloLens 2. You can call it builds. It could be a remote, you know, a remote UNC path. Okay, so I'll just do that and then select folder. It's going to build it. And then we'll just go ahead and test it and see and make sure that it works on my device. All right, guys, the build finished. And I'm going to go ahead and select ARM64 in Visual Studio and then just click on Play Device, which is going to deploy to the device. All right, so it looks like the build finished and it got deployed. So the experience should be coming up here in just a few seconds. I can see the loading screen now. And there we go, we can see the Unity logo. Let's make sure that everything is going to render. I'm getting a couple of prompts, so I'm going to give it permissions. Another permissions for the microphone. And then the experience is working, and I can also see my hands, which is basically what I wanted to test out. Let me make sure that I can interact with objects. I can, so I'm going to call it as a successful video. If you guys have any questions about these, please let me know in the comments. Thank you, guys.